right, we're back to our study in Proverbs chapter 3, 11 through 12. Do not despise discipline. Now, last time we got together, we talked about uh, some of the things we need to be aware of when we're going through discipline. There's some dangers when we're going through the discipline of God that we can fall into, and we don't want to fall into those because we need to be careful because that's just i mean it's human nature we looked at the example of the people of god and you know israelites um and all you having to do with korah's rebellion and what happened there the people were you know angry they were angry at moses they did all these things you know they 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 got angry at God, they began to question God and his, you know, and then they began to blame others, like, well, it's your fault, Moses. And then they denied that they needed discipline at all, like, why is this happening to us? <laughs> you know? And then they think more highly of themselves than they ought to. That's a problem. That's a big problem. And so now we come to a place where we are going to look at uh, how do we take comfort, because that's the next part. That's Proverbs uh, 3.12, for the Lord reproves whom he loves, as a father, the son in whom he delights. That's the good news, right? That's the good part that we want to look at. So let's really just jump into this here. We're going to be looking at a few other verses uh, throughout the Bible. I'll give you some examples here. But uh, I want to start back here in Proverbs 3, 12, like I just read. And um, let's get into it. So first we see in, this, in these verses, it's from the Lord. Remember, it's capital L-O-R-D, the Lord, the name of God. Um, some translations use Jehovah, or now, um, like the Legacy Bible uses Yahweh, I'm sure, there, because they tried to take all those times, instances in there, and change it into Yahweh, which is really the name of God, is what we're talking about. It's not talking about some kind of generic divinity, you know, the divine being. It's talking about the Lord, which is the covenant name that God gave to his people. He said, this is what you can call me, Yahweh. And so this is the promise-keeping God. It's it's connected, you know, the name of the Lord it should always be in our minds connected with the fact that he made covenants, and this is his covenant name. And uh, so we can't leave that, that he made a promise, and he keeps the promise. And so when he uses that name, and we think of that name, we see that name, we should, bing, okay, the covenant God. Uh, the God who made promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God who made promises to Moses. Uh, this is the God we're talking about, not some generic not some false god, not some pagan god. This is the god of of the universe, the true god. <clears throat> we also see this is the god who is transcendent above things, right? He's not part of this world. He is above this world. He's beyond this world. And so we got to remember that that this this god is the transcendent god. He's above the things that are happening. And so he's not part of it. That's what we need. Um when we're talking about discipline, you want a God, you want the Father to be over, uh, you know, outside of the situation so you can see and make wise judgments. The problem is oftentimes when uh, on earthly discipline, when earthly fathers and mothers discipline, there's most of the time they're part of, you know, the situation. And so it's hard to always discipline correctly because sometimes you are in that situation. You never have to worry about that with God the Father because he's always over it. But then he's also a God who is imminent. He's close. He cares. He's with you. you know, he's not a God that can be affected by the situation that you're in, but he's also a God who is there in the situation with you. So he's both. He's both transcendent and imminent. He's near. He's close to you. He cares. He knows what you're going through. And so all the doubts that we talked about you know, that he's paying attention, that he cares, that he's just, you know, maybe he doesn't know what's happening, uh, maybe he doesn't have good for us. No, all that's true. He's close to us. He's near. And that's a good thing. Um, the second thing is that it's from, you know, the discipline that we go through is from the Father. It's from the Father. It flows, his discipline flows from his love. Uh, if you look at Hebrews 12, we'll talk about that, but there's other places where we can see that. Um, Revelation 3.19 says, Those whom I love, I reprove and discipline, so be zealous and repent. There you go. I mean, really, you don't have to go anywhere else, right? Here, this is actually Jesus saying this. Jesus says, Those I love, I reprove and discipline. So, since that's the case, then be zealous for them. Zealous for me, zealous for good works. And... 
repent repent of your sin be a repentant people <clears throat> that's a that's a sermon all in itself right boom the lord loves you be zealous repent you gotta you know it's crazy when people talk about well, i don't see repentance in the bible what, what jesus has said repent <laughs> So anyway, it's right there. If you don't read Revelation, I guess you wouldn't see it, but it's there. And that's those are the words of Jesus. Um, so if you got a problem with repentance and that Christians need to repent, well, there you go. Uh, look at Revelation 3.19. But anyway, that's falling from his love, right? He disciplines those whom he loves. He says that straight out, flat out, boom. It's because I love you because I am disciplining. So that should give us comfort when we're going through discipline. We shouldn't have these doubts. We shouldn't be angry and despise God because of what's happening or despise the discipline because it's actually flowing from God's love. This is a sign of his love for us, not his anger or his um, wrath against us, but it's a sign of his love. So that should change our whole outlook. Like, man, if I'm going through a tough time, the Lord has allowed this in my life. Why? Because he loves me, not because he hates me. Because uh, he loves me. He has good for me. You know, if I have physical struggles or, you know, things like that, then it's because the Lord loves me. Uh, Psalm 94, 12 says, Blessed is the man whom you discipline, O Lord, and whom you teach out of your law. Blessed is the man whom you discipline. Well, there you go. I mean, that's that's a pretty straightforward idea too, right? If you are disciplined by the Lord, you are blessed. If you're disciplined by the Lord, he loves you. If you're not disciplined by the Lord, then like Hebrews 12 says, then you're not a child of his. If he's not disciplining you, then you don't belong to him. You're illegitimate. So you want to be disciplined by him. You want to be under the discipline. You want to have discipline from the Lord. If he's not instructing you or correcting you, then you're in trouble. And what is discipline for? Another reason why we can... Because it's a discipline that is... It is intended to do good, not to hurt. You know, the, he does it, you know, as a father, the son in whom he loves. He delights. The Lord reproves whom he loves. He's disciplining who he loves. He, Jesus said, I discipline whom I love. You know, the Psalms say, you're blessed by God. If he's disciplining you so put all that together that's amazing yes i if i'm being disciplined god loves me and it's as a father and the son whom he delights so that's good i mean you the father in whom he delights he delights in his son he loves the son so it's not intended to do harm to you it's for your own good it's it's a good thing right so that should encourage us as we go through these trials and things through our lives He's not meant, He's not trying to crush you. He's doing this because he loves you. Now, you may not see why, but that's the truth. Uh, turn over to Deuteronomy chapter 8. <clears throat> and in Deuteronomy chapter 8, it says, The whole commandment that I command you today, you shall be careful to do, that you may live and multiply and go and possess the land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers. You shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness that he might humble you. So he's talking about the discipline of the Lord. The reason why he had to go through the 40 years, why the nation had to go through, it was to humble you. Because those people that came out of Egypt were proud and they needed to be put down. And most of them were, well, the ones who died in the wilderness were not followers of God. And so he said that I might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. This is Moses actually speaking. And he humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothing did not wear out on you, your foot did not swell these forty years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines a son, the Lord disciplines you. So you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and by fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land. So right there you see the discipline of the Lord. He's talking about that. 
Deuteronomy, here's the discipline. This is what happened to you. This is God's discipline to you. Now, now these things were not to harm you, right? Because even though, like, you know, the kids of, you know, those who were in their teens and, and, uh, and under at the time, they watched all the older generation die, right, in the wilderness. So now you got the, the, the other generation. Now they're, like, you know, 58 and, and under. You know, they're under their 60s here. And, uh, you know, 59, 58, somewhere around in there. And so those are the old people. <laughs> the, all the older generation has passed away except for, like, Moses and, um, and uh, Joshua and, and Caleb. So you have all these other people are dead. But he says, look, at, you know, you didn't, you, you guys were eating manna out here and, you know, your clothes didn't wear out, your sandals, you know, your feet were fine. You didn't have swollen feet because you're walking around all the time. He said, no, you know in your heart that this man, he, God loved you. The Lord God disciplines you like a father does to his son. So you need to keep the Lord's commands. You know, keep walking in them. Fear him. And then it says, for the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs flowing out in the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills you can dig copper, and you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Why did you go into discipline? Because God loves you. Was it to harm you? No. And so he can bring you into this awesome land that he's about ready to give to you. That's why. That's why he did it. And then first, you know, the next line is, take care lest you forget the Lord your God, which of course they do. <laughs> but that's not, you know, the discipline part was that they could get the promised land. That's why they had to go through the 40 years in the wilderness. That's why, you know, when they were young, they didn't get to go in. Now that they're older, now that they're pushing retirement age, now you're going to be able to go in. Pretty amazing. <clears throat> but that's what happened. Um, there's two more verses I want to point to you. So turn over to 1 Corinthians 11.32. And we'll take a look at that, what that says too. Uh, 1 Corinthians 11.32 says, But when we are judged by the Lord, we're disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. So is, is, he, is he judging you? Is he disciplining you? Because he hates you? Because he wants to, you know, give you bad things? No. And so that you won't be condemned along with the world. That's good. That's what we don't want. We don't want to be condemned from the world. We want to be freed from the world. And so that, that discipline is good. We should invite that. Yes, discipline from the Lord. God will discipline me like a father's son. Because I'm going wayward. And if I did that, I would end up being judged with the world. But he's going to stop that. He's going to, he's going to discipline me and bring him back to me. Const you know, Remember the two types of discipline. He's going to rebuke me, and then he's going to instruct me, and he will do that every time. And so that's good news. We won't be judged along with the world. If we got judged with the world, what does that mean? Hell, right? That's destruction. We don't want that. Uh, one last passage, or one last uh, book I'm going to look, look back at, uh, Psalm 119. I'm not going to read the whole thing, obviously. Uh, but verse 67, let's go there first. Psalm 119, verse 67 says, Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. And so here is a, another encouragement to us, because before I was afflicted, I went astray. I was you know, straying off from what I was supposed to be doing. I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing. And then God disciplined me. And then now I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, right? So the discipline of the Lord kept me from going further astray. I did go astray, but then he brought me back like a good shepherd does. That's what he does. And then turn, go down to Psalm, oh, same, same book, same chapter, just a couple verses down, 71. It is good for me that I was afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. See, there you go. I was going astray, so you rebuked me, right? I was afflicted so that I would learn your statutes. There's the instructive part. I didn't know your, you you told me your, your statutes, but I didn't really learn them. So I didn't learn them until you afflicted me. You brought this discipline into my life. Because discipline and afflicted, sometimes those words are, um, are translated, you know, interchangeably. So it's good for me that I was disciplined. I was afflicted by you, that I would learn your statutes. So I didn't really know what they were. I didn't. I I heard them, but I didn't know them. 
Now I know them because you disciplined me, you afflicted me. And so now I can say, yeah, I got them. Awesome. Thanks, Lord. So, hopefully that makes sense. That's, that's encouragement, though. That should encourage us. And if we are experiencing the discipline of the Lord, it should, hopefully, we'll remember these things. That God's keeping you from going astray. God has good for you. So even when there's a struggle, that's good. We need to remember that. Uh, it's easy to forget, that's for sure. So come back next time. We'll end there for today. But next time, we'll uh, just do a couple of applications for us out of this chapter. So I'll see you back here next time. Thank you.